Okay. This that we're talking about today in section 12.3 is called a normal distribution. It's called normal because it's just our basic distribution that we normally have. Okay, it's the, the path we usually have. So, <laughs> when you are looking at it, for your normal distribution, it's got some characteristics to it. First of all, the highest point straight up and down in the middle, the peak is our mean. And remember, we talked about that symbol yesterday. The little U looking symbol is your mean. Okay. And then we have our other one, which looks kind of like an O with a little extra thing sticking off the side, and that's our standard deviation. Okay, so you have your mean is the highest point in the middle, and then in even increments going each direction, each of these increments is a standard deviation away from the mean. So this is one standard deviation from the mean. This is two standard deviations from the mean, three standard deviations from the mean. We also have it going the opposite direction. This is going that way instead of a positive, it is negative. So you can kind of think of the bottom part of it, kind of like a number line. Your means, the middle, like your O, your origin, your starting point, and then it's going positive to the right, negative to the left. Okay. All of those standard deviations are the same amount, so they're the same distance apart. Now again, this is normally called a bell curve because they kind of think it looks like a bell, but <laughs> most places just call it the normal distribution. Okay, but it's the same thing. <laughs> now you'll notice down here too, I've got some information for you. It's there in your book. Okay, all this stuff I'm talking about is there on page 584, I mean 564 and 565. Okay, as you can tell, this part of the graph is taller. Remember, this is showing where the data is. This part of the graph is taller, so most of your data is closest to the mean, your average. Okay, so you have this big chunk right here from negative one standard deviation to positive one standard deviation, and that's about 68% of your data falls that close to your mean. Then the next set out, 95% uh, of your data falls between two standard deviations from your mean. And then almost all of it, 99.7% of it falls between three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so it's very, very close there to your standard deviation, <laughs> to your mean. It tells how it's related. So, <laughs> They call that rule the empirical rule. If you look on the bottom of page 564, like I told you, all this stuff I'm talking about is there. Okay? All this stuff I'm talking about is right here in your book, 564, 565. They call this the empirical rule, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Empirical rule. Hint, that kind of sounds like it would be like a, one of your true false questions, possibly on a quiz. Okay, knowing what the empirical rule is, the 68, 95, 99.7. Okay, now what we are going to talk about first is we're going to answer some questions relating to a normal distribution. Okay, so we're going to go through the first couple of questions because they're of one certain type. And then we'll talk a little bit more about something else. And then we'll go over some other questions. Is there a different type? And we'll go from there. Okay. So, on one, two, and three, it says sketch the normal distribution graph for each situation and use the empirical rule to answer the related questions. So, it says in number one, a sample of heart transplant patients was found to be mu equal 54 years old. So that means the mean was 54 years old with a standard deviation of 15 years. Determine the percentage of individuals between 39 and 69 years old. So what you do is now, 
I am not good at drawing these curves. Okay, I had Brian put that one up there. <laughs> I'm not good at drawing those at all. My, they're always lopsided and they're supposed to be the same on both sides. So I just worry about doing the little line at the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my little line at the bottom. My mean, it said was 54, correct? I believe, wasn't that the mean? Yeah. All right, and my standard deviation was 15. Yeah, and if I go running, I, I don't feel good right now. So, we go, we have three standard deviations, one to each side. So one, two, three, one, two. Oops, didn't quite go along. Three. Okay, so each standard deviation is 15 long. So if I'm at 54, and I add 15 to get to the next one, that is 69. Nine. If I add 15 to that one, 84. 84 and so on. So you see how this works. Okay, yeah. you add 15 in between one. Now if I'm going the other direction, instead of adding 15, it was a negative, so we subtract. subtract. So 54 minus 15, 39. 39 minus 15. And 24. Okay, and so on. I'm not even going to go any further because the question only asked for it to be in between the two numbers. 39 and 69. Okay, so if we look, 39 and 69 were just one standard deviation away in each direction. So if it's the first standard deviation, how many of them fall in that Ainge range? 68% of the data. 68%. So that's all you have to do. Um, you know, that bad. It's just, I, I can't draw those curves. I don't try to do the curves. I always just do the line across the bottom. One, it takes up more room, and two, mine are always crooked and look funny. So. I just don't even try. Number two. Okay. Number two, same kind of concept. It says a sample was taken to find the average weight of a checked bag for air transportation where mu equals 30 pounds. So their average, their mean was 30 pounds in the middle with a standard deviation of six pounds. So that means to keep getting to the next thing, you're adding six pounds going this way or subtracting six pounds going the other way, okay? So, <laughs> we're adding six pounds going here, so that'll be 36, add another six. 42. 42, add another six. 48. 48, you gotta go the other way, 30 minus six. 24. Minus six. 18. Minus six. Four. So those are our numbers. Remember, this is our average one here in the middle. Now it says, determine the probability of a bag weighing between 18 and 42 pounds. So here's 18, here's 42. So how many standard deviations were those? It was two, going how many? Two in each direction. So when we're looking up here, if it goes from negative two to positive two, it has... 95. 95% of the data. See, that wasn't that bad, was it? Nope. No. You with me, Josaria, Yanelli? Y'all good? All right. We don't talk about the rest of your class. You don't even bother counting. All right. Number three. It says, Anthony measures the average height of the 15-year-old boys in his school district to be 67 inches. So my average is 67 inches. And I'll move the camera in just a minute. I'm just getting my line drawn. Okay, and so we're gonna do the same concept. We're gonna have to do three standard deviations to the right and three standard deviations to the left. It told us the mean or the average was 67. And it tells us the standard deviation 
is two inches. So that means I'm adding two every time or subtracting two. Okay, so 67 plus two is 69 plus two, 71 plus two, 73. Okay, now the other way I'm supposed to subtract two. So 67 minus two, 65 minus two, 63 minus two, 61. So you get your graph drawn first, okay? Then it says, determine the probability of a bag weighing between 18 and 42. Wait a minute, I haven't put the wrong, I'm looking at the wrong one. We already did that one. All right, what is the likelihood of finding a boy who is 63 inches or shorter? There we go. I was reading number two again. 63 inches or shorter. So 63 is down here, right? Or shorter, so it's just wanting in that direction. It didn't say between two things, it just wants the one direction. So the way we're gonna figure this out is 63 is at which one of our standard deviations from the mean? 63 was at which one? That one, right? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, it was at two away, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the first one, it's the second one, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to have to think a little bit more on this. We know from the second one to the second one this way is 95%, right? Mm-hmm. Because that was from here, we got that. So if that part's 95%, that means the two parts on either end equal what percentage? Five. Five because it, the whole thing is 100, okay? So from here to here is 95. So from here and here, these two little pieces add to equal 5%. I'm just talking about one little piece, so what's half of five? 2.5? So it's gonna be 2.5% are gonna be 63 inches or shorter because you're just finding the area for this little section right here. Okay, so sometimes you gotta think a little bit more outside the box using these rules instead of it being like number one and number two where it was straight there. Okay, it still wasn't hard to get the answer, you just had to think a little bit more. Okay, so everybody got one, two, and three? Mm -hmm. All right, now the next part is talking about z-scores, okay? Talking about z-scores. So, <laughs> not everything is gonna match this perfect normal distribution, so sometimes we can transfer it to where it's the standard normal distribution. The unit of standard deviation is commonly represented by what is known as a z-score. So when I say z-score, you need to know what I'm talking about. Now. On page 567 in your book, you need to have where you can flip to that page, okay? And since I have the problems written up here, if you want to just turn to page 567, that's fine. Because you see we have a table of information on here. We're going to use this table on page 567 to answer these next questions. Now, the way this table works is we're finding the areas of standard normal distribution. So like on here, we had the area between one standard deviation off was 68%. The area within two standard deviations was 95. Okay, we had these percentages here. <laughs> now, for these, this is talking about, for we can find the area of any part. It can be this little section here, it can be just from here to here. We're finding an easier way to find those using our z-score table. So the way the z-score works is the number in front of the decimal is this number down the left-hand side. So whatever number is in front of the decimal, you find it on the left-hand side. Whatever number is behind the decimal, you find going across the top. Where the two meet is your answer, okay? So the number in front of the decimal 
is on the left. The number after the decimal, you find it on the top. And then where the two meet is your answer. Now, what it gives you in the table is the percentage of the data that is below that z-score. The probability that it's below that z-score, okay? Now, if it, so that's gonna be a less than. Below is less than, right? Okay, remember less than means below, greater than is gonna be above. Okay, so the table automatically tells you below. If it's above, we're gonna to have to do an extra step and we'll get to that in a minute, okay? So this first one says the probability that the z-score is less than 0 0.5. So I find the zero on the left, so I find that row that has zero, okay? And you all got your table, but you find the row that has zero, and then 0.5 at the top, and where those two meet, you tell me the number that's there. One of you other than Micah can talk. 0 0.691. Okay, thank you. So it says 0 0.691. Okay. So most of the time, you're going to leave it like that. If they ask you for it as a percentage, then you just move your decimal point two places to the right. right. Okay, but that's what you do. Okay, you find the original number on the one side, and then you go from there. All right, so on number six, we have negative zero, and yes, you'll notice on the table, there's a negative zero row and a positive zero row. So you go to the negative zero row on the left, and then you go over to point six, and you tell me what it says. Uh, point two, seven, four. Okay. It says 0.274. Now, if you'll notice on this one, though, it says greater than because the 0.274 is the area underneath that score. If it says greater than, though, we want the area above. So how would I find that? If I know what's below it, how do I find out how much is going to be above it? Um, subtract that number from one. Yes, good, good, good. You subtract it from one. So you're gonna take one minus that to get your answer. I got point seven two six. All right, y'all. Right, I'll be right back. Try number seven.
You guys good in there? Yeah, we're okay. Okay. You know what you need to work on, Ms. Pelham. We'll be right back. Okay. Y'all see my hair blue? Look, look at it. The I did. No, I use the um the hair wax. I got purple and blue. Oh. On Amazon, I can't hear you. You gotta unmute yourself. I'll get it. Sorry, told you I didn't feel good. All right, y'all get it? Yes, no. What'd you get for number seven? All right, well, I got point zero one eight. Girls, do you all agree? I want verbal, yes or no? You agree? Do what? He said, I don't know how he got that. Okay, well, to remember the number in front of the decimal tells you where to go first, right? So the two, you're going down the what side? The left side. The left side, you go down to two. And then you've got point one, so you go to point one across the top. So the number that's there is point nine eight two. So that's point nine eight two. But remember, it is a what? Greater than. If it's less than, what you get on the table is your answer. If it's a greater than, you have to subtract it from one to find out what it is above that point. This is how much is below it. We gotta see how much is above it. So you subtract that and that's how we get the 0.081, okay? But all that is about reading the table. The number in the front, you find on the left-hand column. The number after the decimal, you find at the top of the column. Okay. Sorry, I had to run out on y'all. All right. All right, what's the next part? 11 and 12. All right. Let's at least get through 11 and 12. All right, on 11 and 12, we're finding the Z score ourselves first. Okay. On 11 and 12, we're finding the Z scores ourselves first. Okay. So if you flip over to page 569, it has a little formula for the z-score. It says the z-score is equal to x minus mu, remember mu is your average, divided by the standard deviation, the sigma. So the formula is x is equal to, let me just erase my fingers. Z is equal to X minus mu over sigma, okay? So this is our formula that we're gonna be using. Now, on 11 and 12, we have to back over to where 11 and 12 are. It says a local grocery store sells packages of fresh caught fish. The weights of the packages have a mu or an average of 17 ounces and a standard deviation of 1.6 ounces. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna draw my thing first. 
Okay. Let's see. Well, we don't have to actually draw the thing. All right. So it gave us our average was what? 17. 17 ounces. Standard deviation was 0.3. No, uh, 1.6 ounces. 1.6. So those are our two numbers and we're gonna plug them into the formula, okay? So for my z-score, I have, this is my x value. The number they give you is the x. So I have 16.3 minus the average 17 over the standard deviation 1.6. So that's what we're gonna figure out. Miss Pellum, I got a negative number. That's good. You should get a negative number because a pot with 16.3 minus 17 should give you a negative on the top. So what'd you end up with? I got negative 0. 0.4375. Lord help me. Okay. 0.4375. Okay. Now. For our basic scores that we had, we said to round our answers to the nearest tenth. How many decimal places is that? Four. Yes, this is four, but it said round to the four. nearest tenth, which is just one. one. So is three going to change the four? Uh, no. No, it's just going to be negative point four. So our answer for our z-score is negative 0.4. Now, second part of the question says, is this below or above the average? If the negative is going to be what? Uh, below. Below. So that's Way it. Way below. That's it. OK. Wait, ready to try number 12? Yes. Okay. Are you trying to? Never mind. All right. So this one, this is my X. So I have 18.6 minus 17 over 1.6. What's 18.6 minus 17? Uh, 1.6. 1 1.6. 1 so 1.6 divided by 1.6 is just? 1. So we don't have to round it off. Since it is a positive number, is it going to be above or below the mean? Below. Above. Above, because it's positive. Yeah, but the mean was like 17. I have the mean of 17. What we're finding, though, is how far this is from the mean. So it's, oh. it's one. Above the mean. One above the mean. Oh, okay, okay, okay. One standard deviation. This is going that way. This is going that way. Okay. Negative below, positive above. Okay. That's number 11, 12. We good with those? Yes. Yeah. I see you, Micah. Yeah, you're awfully happy for someone who didn't bother to take his quizzes yesterday. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I had a Spanish test yesterday during Spanish class. So then after that, um, I started playing some Tetris and then I had to paint the rest of my house, or at least the, the rest of the wall. And then, uh, and then I just forgot. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, so the next problem that's teal is 15. 16 and 17. Okay. Everybody see those? 15, 16, and 17. Are we going to do something similar? Probably not. Probably so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are actually. 
Yeah, we are. Okay, I'm gonna scoot over to the other board so I got more room. Okay, so Al, so for 15, 16, and 17, your, it gives you the X, the mu, and the sigma. Okay, it gives you your number, it gives you your mean, and it gives you your standard deviation. So, on the first one, Z is equal to 10 minus, what was the average? Uh, the average was 12. 12, and then the standard deviation? Was 1.25. Okay, so we're gonna start by solving this way. So you have 10 minus 12. Minus 12, which is negative two. Okay, and then negative two over 1.25. Okay, okay, okay. Negative you three, get five, negative 1.6. Okay. I go fast today. Okay. So this part is similar to what we did before. Now this is a negative, so I'm talking about what? Below, below. Below, okay. So this is like what we did in 11 and 12, okay? Now, what we gotta do next is we gotta go back and use the table again because it wants the actual score from the table now. This gives us the number we use on the table. Now we gotta use the table. So Remember the first number you find in the left and the second number you find across the top where they meet gives us your decimal. So negative one on the left and then over to 0.6 at the top. I get 0.055. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So if it was above, would we have to like subtract it from one again? <sighs> on here, I think because on here where it's asking you to find the actual Z score, unless it tells you otherwise, it wants you to just do above. Here, this was above or below the mean. Here, we're always talking about below it for the Z score because we're going back, we're doing something different, we're taking it to the table. Okay. This was just relating it to the mean. This was below the mean because it was a negative, this is above the mean because it was positive. This is giving us the number we use for the table and we're finding the area below that z-score on the table, on the curve, from the bell curve. So, 16, are we gonna do it the same way? Yes. Z equals what goes on top? X, which is 123, minus 110, over 6.3. So do that. Wow, that's good. You get 2.09677419. Okay. <laughs> well, you notice we've been rounding all these to the what place? Tenths. Tenths. Like What's that going to round to for your tenth? 2.1. 2 2.1? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now we're finding below 2.1. So you look on the table at column two. I mean, you find the row two and then column point one. This point nine eight two. Nine eight two. 17. That'll be a good stopping place after we do 17. Z, let's see, X was 257. Your average was the 201. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. And then the other, whatever is standard deviation, 40. 40.
you get 1.4. All right, everybody agree with her? Yes. Yes. I'm glad you agree with her. If you didn't, then that could be a problem. So it's good to agree with her. So we have 1.4. So on our little handy dandy table, you go to one, you go over to 0.4, and you get 919. That's the Z score. Okay? Now, we are doing, if you didn't notice already, what we have been working on mainly on this one are our teal problems. Okay? We've been working on mainly our teal problems. Now, what we can do 21, 22? Hey. You just thought I was gonna let you quit. <laughs> right, 21 and 22 are basically the same thing we just did. Okay? Can we handle that? 21, 22. They worded it a little bit different, but the same basic thing. Okay? We're finding the area below or above, so you gotta read, because sometimes it says below, sometimes it says above. But we're doing the same concept. So we'll get through 21, how's that? So it gives you your mu is 12, that's your average or your mean. It gives you your standard deviation is 1.25, okay? Then on part A, it says find the area below x equal to 11. So Z will equal 11 minus 12 over 1.25. So work that out. You get what? Negative 0 0.8. Okay. So now this is with what you were talking about a minute ago, Micah. On these, it didn't really say below, so it automatically assumed it was below. On here, you got to look because part A says we're finding below this. Mm -hmm. Part B says we're finding above, above it. So we're going to have to do a little bit more thinking on this. So I'm finding the probability it's below that. Okay. Z. That Z is below negative 0 0.8. So I look at my little table, I go to the negative zero, I go to the point eight, and I get my number is? 212. 212, okay? Part B, same basic concept except X is equal to 14. So I have Z equals 14 minus 12, over 1.25. What was the number? I can't see it. X is 14. So 14 minus 12 over 1.25. I got 1 1.6. I'll check and see if that's right. Yeah, I got that too. But on this one, it says find the area above that. So the probability that Z is above 1.6, okay? Remember, we'll have to find 1.6 on the table, and then we'll have to subtract it from 1 because it said above it this time. So find 1.6 on the table. I'm losing feeling in my finger because where I had my it squeezed in my book. Ooh. Lost my table. Hey, what are y'all getting for 1.6? 0.945. No. Give me a piece. But see that it didn't say below it, it said above it. So I have to take one minus that and get point. Yeah, point zero five. five. Yeah, that's what I was writing. Okay. So for you all, I want you to do, you will try 
21, I mean 22 A and B. C is a little bit funky, we won't want to do that. 21, I mean 22 A and B is like 21 A and B. So like part A is like part A, part B is like part B. So could you be able to handle that? Yep. Yeah. But we'll worry about part C on Tuesday. Now, if y'all remember, I sent out a message this morning because some of you did not do pretty on your test 11. Okay, so I was having tutoring this afternoon. Of course, if this is all that's come to class, I wonder how many are gonna show up for tutoring. But anyway, I'll still be here at 2.30. That way you have a little bit of a break, get stuff together. Make sure you have any work that you've done over chapter 11 and any notes you may have taken over chapter 11. Plus, I'll give you some more stuff. I'm specifically talking about things that I saw that were wrong on the test from a lot of people. And then I will reopen that test throughout the weekend so you can go back and try to redo it. Okay? So if you Did want I do pretty? Huh? Did I do pretty on my test? I don't remember. Oh, it's okay. I remember I got an 80 and a 70, but it's okay. Now, I'm not talking about do. what you took yesterday. I'm talking about the big test over chapter 11. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. no, I didn't do pretty. Okay, that's the one I'm talking about because a lot of people didn't do pretty on that one. So, y'all have a little break, a little time, and then if you do want to come back at tutoring, I emailed you the login code. Did everybody get that? Yeah, I got it. Everybody's got it? Danelli, you got it? jazaria has got it? Okay, everybody's got it. So, Take a break. If you know you, that you did not do well on that test, then log back in at 2.30 and we'll go over some stuff specific for the test before you try to retake it. Otherwise, make sure you try 22 A and B and I'll see you on Tuesday. Oh, you're going to reopen the quiz for me? Huh? Are you going to reopen the quiz for me? Uh, well, why didn't we take it again? A lot of stuff happened. And yesterday, Ms. Pellon. You just forgot. You forgot. Your mom is next door. You just forgot. Mm -hmm. So, I'll think about it. Okay. You, I'll, let you, I'll send you a message. So, you got to check what? An email or a microwave. Email, so, find out. All right. So, All right. bye for a little bit. And if you're coming back, I'll see you. And otherwise, I'll see you Tuesday. All right.